Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. My name is Nalo and today we're going to be talking about the top 5 most underrated investments in CSGO. So if you didn't notice I made a top 5 most overrated investments in CSGO video and so it's only fair that I make this video for the top 5 most underrated investments. So what constitutes an underrated investment? It's basically going to be an investment that has a lot of potential to rise in the future but isn't really talked about by anyone and really has been talked about in some cases by me but only very rarely. Let's take one quick look at a sponsor and get onto this video. So the sponsor for today's video is skinport.com. They are a great site with a beautiful and smooth UI that you can use to buy any underrated investment that you want. It's going to be a great experience for buying any skins that you have your eyes set on and they're going to have great prices of course as well. The site has over 140,000 skins listed on it and so it's going to be a great place to buy new skins. Don't believe me? Go check out the site using the link in the description below to support the channel. Anyway guys, thanks for checking out Skinport and supporting my channel and let's get on to this video. Alright guys, the number five spot for this list is going to go to the USP Royal Blue. This is going to be an an interesting one because as we all know the USP is the pistol of choice for most counter terrorists in CSGO games and another interesting thing about this is that it's very old it is from the cobblestone collection of course now it's a pretty overlooked skin for the most part because a lot of people don't really think it's that good looking and it's kind of just an overall blue USP so as we all know the cobblestone collection is no longer available in its full force that it used to be so the USP royal blue gets harder and harder to obtain every single day now the cool thing about this is that its graph has actually shown some really solid returns and I actually did pick up one during investment odyssey and it did really solid. It actually did way better than I thought it was going to, totally performed way better than my expectations had it for. It also comes in souvenir quality and actually more for the older years of souvenirs, which makes it pretty interesting in that aspect as well. You can actually buy one in souvenir to get an even rarer item. Personally speaking, I don't think that the base USP Royal Blue looks all that great, and I really think that the souvenir one is the way to go if you're going to use it as any sort of play skin, and I actually think it's a really unique and interesting design quality with the souvenir gold matching with the Royal Blue overall for the skin. So I think it's a pretty cool aspect of it and if you do want to pick one of these up I would recommend going with Souvenir. So between its really interesting finish with the gold and blue and also the fact that it's from the cobblestone collection from a long time ago making it harder and harder to obtain every single day and also the fact that its graph has been showing really solid returns for a while now I think the USP Royal Blue is a solid choice to pick up for investing in underrated investments. Moving on to the number four spot for this list we actually have a skin that is fairly popular in the community but not for investment purposes. This one's going to be the M4A4 Daybreak. The Daybreak is a phenomenally well designed M4A4 one of the most unique ones in the entire game. While it does feature a lot of black, which for a lot of people seems to be a pretty boring aspect of it, it does have a really great design and it does actually have interesting patterns as well that can also affect the price. The M4A4 Daybreak is from the Rising Sun collection, which overall is actually a really solid one to buy into, just in any skin that you want to choose from it, and I think the M4A4 Daybreak is one that is highly overlooked in terms of actual investing purposes. It's a really solid skin and it has a great design as well. It's been showing really solid returns starting at around $60 at the beginning of this year and now selling for almost $100 on the Steam community market, so a really great profit margin already. And as the skin is still going to be rare and hard to obtain as the collection is no longer really available in game, it's only going to really rise in price. The M4A4 Daybreak is a great skin to invest in for a lot of reasons. For starters, the pattern on it can of course be a little bit randomized where you can get better and worse looking patterns. It's widely beloved by the community and while it does have a pretty minimalist design, it has a really unique one on that same aspect. It also has a great graph with a lot of returns being shown over the past year and also the fact that the the M4A4 Daybreak is pretty hard to obtain because it's from the Rising Sun collection which is no longer really available. Speaking on the availability of the collection as well, another interesting thing to point out is the fact that Shutterweb Operation introduced three new collections into the game, so if there is going to be an operation anytime in the future, I really highly doubt they're even going to even consider bringing back the old Hydra Operation collections, so that's a really good reason to buy it as well. Moving on to the number three spot, we have probably the most underrated major of all time, which is going to be Dreamhack 2014. This capsule has been absolutely crushing it on the market recently, starting this year at around $45 and now sitting comfortably at around $120 in the Steam community market. The stickers from this collection are absolutely phenomenal and every single hollow in the collection has an extremely unique effect and look and also has a great design with the square background. It's a really good logo based design for the stickers and it's just a really solid looking one overall. This is also an extremely old sticker collection, actually even older than Katowice 2015, so that actually really speaks to the value of these stickers as well. Despite these great things about the collection, many people tend to overlook this in favor of Katowice 2015 or Katowice 2014 and tend to not really care too much about Dreamhack. Because of all these factors, and regardless of the fact the community tends to overlook this collection, I still think it's a phenomenal investment, and even though it's a pretty underlooked one and definitely an underrated one, it's still going to show some insane returns in the future despite the sticker manipulation that happened earlier this year. And for these reasons, I think the Dreamhack 2014 collection of stickers is a phenomenal one to invest in. And now we move on to the number two spot for this list, which is going to be souvenir packages. Souvenir packages have been widely overlooked when it comes to majors because people tend to be trying to focus on leveling up their 
another coin, or they're just focused on the major themselves. There's also some good investments to make during the major, but a lot of people tend to overlook the packages themselves. The souvenir packages are going to be a great one to invest in for a lot of reasons. First of all, it gives you a wide range of options and different customizations that you can make to your investments in terms of what players you want to buy for their MVPs and what maps you want to buy for their items. The best souvenir packages to invest in, at least in my opinion, are going to be Cobblestone, Nuke, Overpass, and Cash. These ones are all good for a lot of reasons, but they pretty much all have a really specific skin or a really chase skin that are good to go for. Their general values also tend to be a little bit higher than other souvenir packages, so they're always a great one to look out for and generally have pretty decent demand. In general, buying into older and older years is going to be better for your investment portfolios as you're going to make more money because they're going to be less obtainable. I do see some people investing into these packages, but they rarely hold on to them long enough in order to turn them into profitable margins, and I really think they're going to be a solid one to hold on to for a long time. Even the Berlin one, which was going to be a little bit more customizable and people were able to kind of pick the specific one that they wanted, and they generally were higher in quantity than others, these Berlin ones still did rise quite a lot and have doubled mostly in price since their original release. So that's going to be souvenir packages. As I said, they have a lot of really great factors for why they're solid investments. Of course, they are really customizable in terms of what players you can buy into and also what majors you can buy into, which makes them a really good one to buy for people that want to kind of customize their portfolio to the max. They span a wide range of years and also a wide range of maps with a wide range of items, so that's also going to add in a lot more customizability as well. And as I said, the older packages that you buy, the better you're going to have it for investment profits as they are going to be more unobtainable. The number one spot for this list is going to go to a weird one, probably one that a lot of people are going to be a little bit taken aback by. That's going to be the bayonet and M9 bayonet knives. So I know it sounds a little bit weird, but it's here for a good reason. So while I agree that the M9 bayonets and bayonets are a popular knife overall, they are not a popular investment knife. People don't really tend to look at them as investments and tend to look at other knives like the butterfly or karambit as investments. What is interesting about these items though is the fact that people tend to look at karambits and butterfly knives as great investments, but a really interesting thing is that the bayonet and M9 bayonet have actually performed phenomenally over the last year and have done great returns on the marketplace. For example, the Bayonet Fade was around $250 in March of last year and has now risen to almost $600 just up to this point. Obviously when it comes to these knives in particular, you're going to want to go with the older ones, the ones that are in their original finishes like Slaughter, Fade, and Case Hardened for example. They're all going to be great options and are going to show you probably a lot of profit going forward. Now I realize some people might not think that these are underrated investments, but I can assure you they are not really seen as investments in the community as a whole and they tend to be looked at as just a good play knife. And while they are good play knives, they have also shown great returns, and especially the older finishes, so I think those are why it's going to be a great option. So if you want to go ahead and check out these items, be sure to keep an eye on them. I think they're going to do solid going forward. Anyway guys, thank you for checking out the video with me today, and be sure to go ahead and leave a subscription on the channel if you guys enjoy my content and want to see more like this in the future. Also be sure to like the video if you want to go ahead and help me out, and be sure to check out my Discord, Twitter, and Skinport links in the description below. I really appreciate your continued support on the channel, and I really thank you for checking out this video today. Thank you guys so much for being here, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.